Hi, it's Sandy again, and today I'm going to paint a rooster in watercolor. Uh, this drawing is from a photograph that is available on my website at sandrajschultz.com. So please go there and go into the download, under the download tab. To get ready to paint this picture, I wet both sides of my paper. This is Arches Rough, 140 pounds. And the reason I wet it is not to stretch it so much as to allow the paint to migrate outside of the lines, which you can see it's doing there. Sometimes it migrates a little bit too much, but I like to have that uh, unclear line because I think it just gives my subjects a little bit more life, a little bit of movement. So where it's going out too much, where I don't like it, or it's going into a spot that I don't like, I can just take a, a paper towel and dab it into there, and it'll just come right up because it's so wet. So right there I'm dabbing into the red part of the bird's face. I'm going to put the colors up on the screen so that you can see what I'm using. But of course, if you paint, uh, you're going, you're probably not going to have the same paints that I have. So I would say just pick a, a bright yellow, a darker yellow, a red, and a brown, and Payne's gray. And you can pretty much make the colors that you the colors on this rooster that you need from those. So I just made a gray out of out of my blue and red and yellow to do the bird's breast. And on this first coat, I'm just giving it a light coat. I'm just blocking in the colors and uh, letting the colors run a little bit outside of the lines. And this the next coat that I put in is going to be on, if not completely dry paper, it's going to be on drier paper. And so that will stay within the lines. So it just gives you a little bit of blurring, which I like. If you don't like that, I would suggest you just don't wet your paper and just start doing, doing this whole process with dry paper and all of your paint will stay within the lines. that yellow there on the tail is I should have taken that off after after I worked on it a bit I realized that I really didn't like that yellow there I actually painted that in it didn't migrate there and I just made a mistake so if you're going to be painting this bird I would say uh, don't put that yellow there at the base of the feather the tail feathers because it it isn't there in the picture if it bleeds in there a little bit that's fine but I have I have it too yellow So I'm just looking at the kind of the blocks of color on this bird and I'm mixing up what I have from mixing up my colors from what I have on the on the plate here and and if you do it like that if you don't have a bunch of colors if you mix your colors from what you've got um, you're going to have a lot more cohesive picture and I would encourage you to work at trying to do that more and more oops a little bit too red yikes that's red okay I'm not ready for that much red. I'm just trying to put an undercoat layer on this on this bird first. Now with green and uh, red, I'm going to make a sort of a, a grayish, a different shade of gray than I'm using, than I was using before. It's going to be more brown. So I want to put that on the bird's legs. I'm seeing that in the photo that's a little bit more brown. There, see, I'm dabbing a little bit, a little bit too much out there. And when this painting dries, that color outside of the lines is not going to be very visible at all. But uh, 
uh, it, it still is going to give the the bird a little bit of feeling of movement instead of such a static like a statue. I don't I don't like that whole statue look. So that's what I'm guarding against here by doing it like this. Now this is my darker yellow, and I'm I so I've got the lighter yellow underneath, and that is that's going to be the, provide the highlights of this, and then the darker yellow, which is nickel azo yellow from Daniel Smith, um, is going to be my my main color in these yellow parts of the bird. This video is actually speeded up as you can tell, but it's about uh, double time. So uh, other than the drying time that, you know, I of course didn't film, this picture only took me probably probably less than an hour, maybe about an hour to to paint. So I would encourage you to just just do it. Don't don't belabor your painting so much that you, because you actually start to overwork them then. Just say, okay, I'm going to paint this really quick. This is a, a fast painting. And it's surprising how much you learn and how freer you get when you have that time, you have given yourself that time limit. So if you don't paint like that, I would encourage you to just give it a try. Just say, okay, I've got, I've got an hour. I'm going to finish this. And just do what you can in an hour. And... I think it'll probably change the way you paint if you do that because it's it's better with watercolor to not belabor it. You will end up with muddy colors and and an uninteresting uh, picture at at the end. You just really need to not touch your paper very much. I am as always paying attention to color temperature and as I'm thinking about the feathers kind of being in the background or if they are on the top of the bird I am paying attention to that and I am making my colors warmer or cooler depending on where they are try to make sense of my not the greatest drawing here and so I'm um, the tail is a little bit of a challenge to me because I didn't really have the feathers figured out so uh, I'm kind of working with it and, and it really doesn't matter it's it's not a um, meant to be a photo realistic bird it's supposed to be more painterly so the idea is a bunch of feathers on the tail kind of sticking up so I think that I got that through
As I'm painting this, I'm looking a little bit at the photo, but not as much as as you would think. I am relying on my memory of chickens. We have had chickens, and uh, I I am really lucky to have sort of a what would you call it? A brain that retains things the way they look, the the nuances. Uh, the shadows and so I'm mostly actually painting this just out of instinct like where would the lights be where would the darks be where would the feathers be In the area around the eye and the head, you need to have nice contrast. You need to have sharper lines than on anywhere else on the painting. That is, this is where you really need to have uh, some detail in there that is sharp and you need to have value changes. It's very important because that is going to draw the viewer's eye. And so like if you didn't have nice uh, sharp lines and value changes around the head and say on the uh, but you did on the feet then the viewer would be drawn to look at the feet so when you're drawing an animal you just really need to have the head and the eye be the focal point so keep that in mind and work especially spend more time on the head and around the eye especially uh, than you do on any other part individual part of the painting
Now on the feet here, the back foot, I am making a little bit less uh, vivid and I'm adding in a little bit cooler colors. So I'm adding in a little bit of the blue. And I'm sure you know the reason for that is because that uh, that creates a, a feeling of distance. So that, that foot's a little bit further away. Okay, I sort of missed a little bit of the video because I was painting outside of the where you could see it. So I put in some uh, of the deepest colors and that's some of my ruby and a little bit of the blue to deepen up and make it seem a little bit more like those areas I recessed. And I'm just giving the beak here a little bit of a, a, a heavier coat and that's basically a finished coat right there. I might have to touch a little bit up. So what I'm going to do on that comb, the bird's comb, is wait till that dries and then I'm going to come back with a lighter wash again with of the ruby, just the plain ruby, and uh, fill in around it. But I need to wait until that dries. So I'm going to go down and work on his feet right now. And, and it's dry there. It's dried up enough for me to do the comb, so I'm putting in another coat of of ruby and probably we'll have to do another one. It's a little bit dull, but I need to wait between each one of these coats until it's completely dry. So here I'm going to put in a little bit of shadow. I'm going to start putting in some some contour. If you have a uh, are painting this picture and you get to a point where you kind of scrunch your eyes at it and um, you are not seeing much value change, then Go back, this is the next coat then is to increase, bump up the darkness. And especially areas that are right next to white areas, that's gonna really uh, pop out and make this, make this picture a lot more interesting than if you don't do this final one. It's, I know it's very tempting to think you're done and you're gonna mess it up, but if you do mess it up, you will have learned something. So then you can start over or you can do another picture, but um, do try to get some value change in that. So uh, a big problem that, uh, well, for artists in general, but watercolor is seems to be especially like that because it does dry duller than when you put it on. And if you don't pay attention to that um, and put some color, put some value and color back in, it's it's going to be a little bit of a a boring picture. So beef up the color, beef up the contrast. And now on to the eye. The eye is hugely important to get right. You need to have a light spot in it and it in order to give it life, if you just have a dark, it's not going to have any life at all. Be very careful when you are painting. See right there, I made a mistake. I pulled out that paint in the back there and I should not have done that. That's not the way chicken eyes are. Um, when you are painting an animal's portrait, which basically this is, be very careful not to put a human's eye into it. It is done so often. Um, I keep remembering this story my mother still tells. Uh, she's 87 years old, and she still tells this story how she went to a an art gallery, and she saw this picture of a bear, of a head of a, a black bear. And it was just so beautiful. It was just absolutely perfectly done. And she said, and then she looked at the eyes, and they were people eyes. And she remembers that. I mean, she's starting to forget things, but she remembers that. So don't be one of those people who puts people eyes on your animal. It's just, it's just going to ruin your picture. Really look at the eyes, at the shape. The shape of the eyes are different. And it's so important to get that right. So if you're going to focus on anything, focus on, on eyes. 
I'm going to erase the pencil lines in here, which pencil lines I can erase, and some of them won't want to come off underneath the paint, but that's all right. It doesn't matter, but I'm just kind of getting rid of what I, what will come off and, uh, and then, and then it just looks like a nicer, more finished picture. Some people leave the pencil lines on and that's perfectly fine too. So I'm just going to beef up some contrast here, go around the bird and where I need to create more value change, more contrast, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're coming to the end of this video. I hope that you try to paint a rooster. It's a very fun thing and it, it's, a, it's good practice. It's a totally different kind of painting, painting feathers like this. Um, remember to define around the head well, get the eyes like chicken eyes and not like human eyes. And uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.